Hey, how are we doing? I just want to give you a video today to just explain a little bit about during bowling the roles of the pelvis and the thoracic. Okay, now the pelvis and thoracic are absolutely crucial into understanding what's going on and what we need to do. Because if we don't understand this, then how do we know what we need to do when training and the little nuances in training in and around the pelvis, in and around the thoracic? Okay, so this is video one really of, of a two part series which tries to understand the mechanics and how that relates in a lot of ways to injury, not just performance, because the two go intrinsically hand in hand because if your action's good, you're going to be more robust. So this is what I want to talk about today. So we're going to look at back foot contact, front foot contact, some dysfunctions around the two and the ball release of where in the round we want the pelvis and we want the thoracic. So along the top we've got the pelvis and in the red we've got thoracic. So what this triangle means, if you look at it, so we've got a little red dot which is your left side, uh, right dot which is your right side and the forward of the pelvis. So those triangles mean we're facing forward. So in there it's perfectly square, facing forward, you know, like I am now. And the same with the thoracic, the same position. Okay, and then we're going to talk about how it rotates and how everything sort of fits together a little bit from there and why there's dysfunction and what's going on. So, also I want to talk about the, the hip and knee. Now this is um, what Steph brought into cricket and it's massive. Okay, if people aren't working with this at the moment and understanding the concepts around it, they're missing out in terms of bowling, in terms of s in terms of injury. It's massive, you know, it's, it's groundbreaking, you know, we look, probably look back in 20 years time and it might be one of the most important things that got brought in to cricket. So, this is what happened. So, back foot contact. So this is a hip dom and this is a knee dom. What we typically see in back foot contact is the hip dom, pelvis is landed, so everything's facing forward. In a nice position, thoracic, exactly the same. So when we're like that, and that will be the front foot, uh, the back foot contact facing forward as well, everything is lined up nice at back foot contact. Whereas the knee dom will land almost at a 45 degree angle with the pelvis. So straight away, the pelvis is back and they're landing and the pelvis back and the thoracic a lot of time is forward. But also what we see a, a, a lot with the knee doms is this. So if you look at this, this is, so if this is square, this is all the way around. So this is his left side, so we're facing the wickets this way. The right side is all the way behind. We see that? All the way behind there, and that leads to, to your feet crossing. So if your feet are landing bang, bang, the pelvis is doing that. And then the thoracic is likely to be open as well. That's not a horrendous thing to have, an open thoracic. We can see that, so again, facing that way, so we're slightly at 45 degree instead of straight on. And again, we see that a lot of times with that sort of pelvis, so almost the hips and the thoracic, the pelvis and thoracic are in the same sort of plane, which is usual, absolutely usual, okay? But this is quite common, but it's a, something that we'll see in a second we don't really want, because then at front foot contact, so the pelvis of the, of the good hip dom will stay pretty much fairly straight on, fantastic. Thoracic will open up to create that hip shoulder separation, which we want to allow the oblique sling to start working, and get more pace. So hip shoulder separation there. Perfect, okay. The knee dom will be landing, again, at front foot contact. The pelvis is open, but the thoracic is in the same place. So there we've got no hip shoulder separation. And this comes in, again, so the Steph brought in, the pre-turn. When we've got no pre-turn, this happens. And so then we're gonna be down on pace, and then we start to muscle it down instead of use the kinetic chain. And then what could also happen there is almost the, what called the reversed hip shoulder separation. So the thoracic is forward at front foot contact and the hips are back. So then we're really battling. We're really battling. And that's what we don't want to see. And then at ball release, you know, hopefully the, the pelvis and the thoracic is forward and everything could be working nicely. So when this happens, we know what, we, we, what should happen is not a lot of lateral flexion. And thus we're saving the back, but not only that, 
we know we're not trying to muscle it down there. We're probably bowling with the back foot still in contact because when we see again a back foot come up, we see a lot of lateral flexion go on. So the keys with some of these is absolutely to look at what's going on at these sort of dysfunctional patterns. You know, we're looking around here, we're looking around here, okay? What's going on? So we're seeing if that pelvis is getting stuck there and we're not able to orientate it through, when we look at their movement screening, most of the time their glutes aren't working very well and they've got really poor hip internal rotation. Almost to a bowler, we know. If that's happening, we know something's going on. And again, with here, you know, when we've got the feet crossing, we know they've probably got a lot of instabilities going on and we see it through Yonder's cross syndrome, through the core, into the glutes, they're not working right. They're not working as we need to do and they might not be strong enough to, to cope with it. And when we haven't got that sort of strength and stability, we lose hip internal rotation. Your bowling is the direct result of what your body does. That's it. That's it. You know, so if we understand that, then we can fix the body and actually get through. So that's key. So when we have things like this, the pelvis all the way around and feet crossing, or front foot contact, the pelvis not coming through, or the thoracic closing up, so we've got the reverse hip shoulder. If that's happening, you're there, then we need to look what's going on with the thoracic. Have you got the range? through your thoracic and extension, have you got the control at your core and your trunk? You know, what is going on with your pelvis? Because the pelvis feeds into that. Have you got too much extension? So are you not controlling the pelvic tilt? Everything like this, we need to understand and know, okay? And we need to understand that they're, again, they're intrinsically linked. Intrinsically linked. Your action and your body. And when we understand one, we can understand the other. So, when we look at the action, so when guys come on the one-to-one -one call, and I look at the action, I think, right, we pretty much know what is gonna happen when we look in your movement screen. Because the action, and there's almost, what's happening with stress fractures, which are gonna go into more in video two, we can see in this, these sort of patterns. So when, when, they, uh, when they bowl nice, and we've got the everything facing forward, so like their hip is forward, forward and open, forward, forward. Brilliant, not much can go wrong there. If the training's right, if you've got a good bowling coach, you understand your body, look after your body, there's not a lot that can go wrong there. When we've got the, the knee dom, when we're landing, then we're having good hip shoulder separation, and we're getting, again, the pre-turn right, and we're understanding what's going on there, the feet aren't crossed, brilliant, okay? Now what we're gonna go on to in video two is more about what's happening at the the, uh, the hip and the levels of leg extension and how that relates to everything and how that's related to stress fractures. But again, we need to understand the hip and knee dom because it does inform so much and it helps out. Like I said, from Steph, groundbreaking work, the hip and knee dom, but it just shows you what's happened to the pelvis and the thoracic and then how that plays into everything. So when we can say get from here, the pelvis here, to in this position, just through training and, and not through anything bowling specific, we're unlocking lots of stuff. If we're not doing the, the training, if we're not relating this to your fitness and your movement and your health, and we're just trying to do more bowling drills, not gonna work. Okay, it's really not gonna work. You can be doing it hours and hours, but we have to unlock the body. The body's clever, the mind's in, tr in charge of the body, and if you've got tightness, which is making that happen, just trying to crow by yourself in there, you're gonna be banging your head against a brick wall. So crucial we understand this, crucial we get it right, and when we do, we can not only ease the amount of injuries which are going on, but help yourself bowl quicker and more consistent. Because when you've got less dysfunction and we've got more repeatable action, you're gonna be more consistent, okay? Hopefully that's helped. So video two, we're gonna go into more about the, the, um, the back foot contact and what's happening there and how that relates to the stress fracture. Speak soon.